Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Our gospel lesson today has a pretty simple parable, uh, yet I share with you a, a big chunks of scripture that I think kind of uh, shape and mold it for us, a simple message, yet I hope by the word of God, the Spirit uh, shares with us the, the passion and the joy and the response that we have to what God teaches us. Our Old Testament lesson kind of frames the parable, I think, pretty well when it says, God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. When you encounter the parable of the workers in the vineyard, uh, God is completely sharing us the idea that his kingdom is not the way we operate as humans. Um, and the way we operate as humans in this parable, rightfully so, we read this parable and we get a little frustrated. It should not be this way. Uh, if I go and work all day long and someone works only an hour, they should not get what I get. It shouldn't work. To, if McDonald's tried this plan, right, and they paid the worker that worked there all day the same as one who came in late and was disheveled and only did a little bit of work, uh, McDonald's would not stand. Businesses would not stand. A society would not stand if we don't work and we still get paid. It just doesn't operate. That, but that's the way of, of life in this world. And the kingdom of God isn't like that. So we understand these workers and their frustration. How dare they get what I get when I worked all day? Uh, it was interesting when Josh shared this, uh, you know, what are you afraid of? Uh, back when I was in Wisconsin, there was this radio commercial and it always said, you know what I'm scared of? And then it would say, unclaimed inventory. Well, you know, I imagine if you have a business, that would be scary, but it made me laugh. Right? Um, who's scared of that? Well, maybe someone. And here, they're scared, right? Scared that they're not going to get what they deserve. Yeah, when we talk about the kingdom of God, Jesus shares with us that God's ways are higher than our ways. In chapter 19, uh, the context for this, uh, God, Jesus is talking to Peter and the disciples, and Peter asks a question. Usually when he asks a question, it's not a very good one. Um, but here it's maybe an interesting question. They're encountering all these people that refuse to leave the worldly life in order to follow Jesus. And so Peter asks, well, what about us? We've left everything and we've followed you. What then will we get? That seems like a question we shouldn't ask God. I don't know. That's just, I, you know. But in some ways, maybe it makes sense. Everyone else won't leave and follow Jesus. They have and followed him. What will we receive? And Jesus doesn't put him in his place. He actually responds to the affirmative. He says, truly I say to you in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit in his glorious throne, you who have followed me will sit on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. When I come as judge of the whole world, you also are going to be right there with me in places of prominence, and you too will assist me in the judging of the world. What will you receive? A great honor and a great responsibility. But he goes on. But what about everyone else? Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake, they'll receive a hundredfold, and they will inherit eternal life. Jesus says, if you've left all to follow him, will you receive a reward? Absolutely, you will. But, <laughs> right? But, he gives them a line here, right? Uh, a reminder that the first will be last, and the last will be first, and then he's going to tell a parable about the kingdom of God is not like our ways. And so a danger when he says, yes, you will receive reward, well, all of a sudden they start to say, well, I did more than so-and-so, or I, the disciples, I mean, they were called first, they were in first place, and all of a sudden they start to compare, and God says, nope, not in my kingdom. There's no place for comparison. 
I give the reward as I give the reward, and the first will be last, and the last will be first. So he tells the parable, and he really does a great job. He's a great storyteller, is he not? Of building the suspension, right? Uh, He goes out early in the morning, and he hires them, and says, you know what? You'll get a denarius. And then he goes out the third hour, and the sixth hour, and the ninth hour, right? And and the third and sixth and ninth really don't even matter in the story. He's just building the suspense. And he doesn't say how much he's going to pay them. I mean, you would think he could figure out the hourly wage and say, well, you get two hours of, you know, so and so. But no, he simply just says, I will give you whatever is right. And so we're built and we're up and we're ready um, at the end of this. This one group, they come at the very close of the day, the 11th hour. They do just a tiny bit of work and now it's quitting time. Evening comes, the owner of the vineyard says, pay them, right? Pay them from the last up to the first. Uh, It works out really well that way, uh, to go from that direction. And all of a sudden they see those that come at the end, they get a denarius. And again, it doesn't matter about all the other ones. And you can imagine what they're thinking. All of a sudden, this master is become incredibly generous. Probably because they'd worked so hard. And they got like 10 times more grapes hauled in than maybe they thought they would at the beginning of the day. They worked so hard. They're such a great abundant. Um, And so in a sense, they're taking ownership for the abundant crop. It's because of the hard work they did. And now the uh, master's being generous and he's going to give me, please, what I deserve. And he hands them just a denarius. And they're furious. Because what is something we fear? Not getting what we deserve. How dare you make them equal to us? If you run a business, I think your employees would feel that way if you (laughs) operated this way. But God says in the kingdom of God, um, it's not about the payment. Because all of a sudden they've taken their eyes off of the master and the work in the vineyard and they have started to compare themselves in the payment they receive and they've lost sight of the fact that God is generous. They are grumbling against Him because of their comparison. And God says, friend, I didn't do you any wrong. You received the reward that was promised you. You received the reward that is necessary. Um, Do you, this is a key word, do you begrudge my generosity? Am I not allowed, right, to do what I choose with what belongs to me? And then he flips the, the order from what he had in the last chapter, right? The last will be first, the first will be last. From the first will be last, the last will be first. He flips it. Uh, he's just, he's, he just lays it bare. There's no place for comparison. Because it's not about the work you do and the reward you will receive. yes. Peter, will you receive reward? Yes. Right? If you've left everything in this world, you come follow me, will there be reward? Yes, but it's not about it. It's not about the reward. You've taken your eyes off of me. Jesus, mindful of the reward, is all about the service. Right after this parable, he gives another passion prediction. He talks about being delivered over to the chief priests, being condemned, delivered to the Gentiles, mocked, flogged, and crucified. He says, come and work in my vineyard. Where I go, you will go. And then right after that, James and John say, they don't really get it, right? Who's going to be on your right and left in your kingdom? And he says, that's not what it's about. That's My ways are not your ways. That's what the Gentiles do. No the first will be last, and the last will be first. I think in some ways our epistle lesson really gives us a great picture of what our parable is all about. Yes, Peter and James and John, they were early on the scene, and Jesus says, you'll judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Uh, Did you know that many times Paul said, I am one untimely born? In a sense, in a way, he came in in the eleventh hour, yet he receives the same blessings. And as he talks to the people of God, he, he shares that there is no competition, there's no comparison in the kingdom of God. He says, no, instead, God is doing his work. It's ultimately about being a worker in the vineyard. 
And he says, you know what? Uh, For to me, to live is Christ. To die is gain. And do you see the relationships they have with one another? He says, you know what's so great about me being in prison? Uh, I get to share the gospel. And because I'm sharing the gospel, the other workers in the vineyard are being emboldened to get to work and share the gospel. He's not sort of saying, well, I'm in prison. What do I get? Right? No, he's saying, look at what I get, that they are emboldened together. We are working for the gospel. And then did you catch these words as he strives to encourage them, right? He says, uh, you know, sure, I'd love to go and be at home with Jesus, but I think he has work yet for me to do. And for your benefit, I do my work. Do you see how that's not comparison? I'm I'm doing the work for your benefit, for your blessing. And then he says, so that whether I come and see you or I remain absent... I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. I think God's Word shows us what it's about to be in the vineyard. It's really not about the denarius at the end of the day. It's about being with our Master in His vineyard. And whether I come in the morning or I come at the 11th hour, uh, the blessing is to work in the vineyard. And actually, if you worked all day, you got more blessing for being in His vineyard. For to live is Christ, Paul says. To die is gain. It is our blessing as God's people, whether you've been here for eight, uh, we got one couple celebrating a 65th wedding anniversary. I think they've been in this church forever this week. Um, you know, and uh, uh, wow, right? And we have some people that are just pretty new around here. What a blessing it is to be in God's kingdom together, striving side by side for the gospel. Why? Because we're with our Savior. He comes to us in His Word and in His sacraments and He enriches us with His grace. And someday we'll get our denarius when He calls us to our heavenly home. Jesus says, don't look one to another in comparison for what you get. Look one to another as fellow workers in the field and the joy it is to labor with Christ in His vineyard. To live is Christ. To die is gain. My ways are not your ways. They're so much higher, God says. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may it guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.